The following presentation was recorded at the 2014 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond sponsors in 2014 for helping make these videos possible. Welcome everyone to Baby You Can Drive My Cloud um, and uh, maybe you'll fork it. So um, I work for Eucalyptus Systems. Um, we are a private and hybrid cloud provider um, that works pretty much seamlessly with Amazon Web Services. Um, you can run Amazon commands against our clouds. You can run our uh, commands against Amazon's clouds as long as the creds are sourced the proper way. Um, I am Scott Seeley. I am a cloud support engineer. Um, we are based out of Santa Barbara, but I work in Cary, North Carolina here. So um, let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, you can put a private cloud where is a good question. Um, and I'm going to show you, hopefully, as long as the wire, or the, my connection here help holds out, I can show you how to put it on a VM on, a la on your laptop, um, a small computer in a corner, an old machine under a desk, or the usual rack in a data center. Um, and as we were just chatting, uh, easily, even on my back, even though it does uh, mess up with some people's spectrum. Um, but anyway, so um, how can you accomplish this on your laptop? So um, we have a couple of different ways. Um, this is just three of them here. Um, we have our UCA development environment, and that's hopefully what I'm going to be able to show you. Um, it started on my laptop. Basically, what it is is it's a um, a, sh a script that goes and sets up a chef server in a VM environment and then it provisions out a cloud, um, gives it credentials, gives it space, gives it the ability to spin up instances right on your laptop. You don't have to be connected to any uh, internet once you've got it installed. Um, we have our fast start scripts, which I'm also going to show you as well. Um, these are one line curl scripts that will go out and you run it on your server, and it completely sets up an entire cloud set, set up. Um, or from source, um, if you're the kind of person who likes to tackle the challenge of pulling down source code and building out the, the packages, um, we, can, we have that out on our site as well, GitHub site as well. Um, so anyway, let's uh, jump over here real quick. Um, so this is the script running for the Yuka Dev environment. Um, it's basically, as I said, it's just a bunch of chef scripts that go out, sets up a chef server, um, provisions out the VM on your laptop, um, and it's currently running, uh, trying to get the chef server set up on my laptop. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you the, uh, so our GitHub here, we are completely open source. Uh, all of our code is sitting on GitHub. You can go out there, you can grab it, you can fork it, you can contribute to it, put pull requests, um, whole nine yards. We are out there for you to use and abuse. Um, the you could dev environment that I'm setting up currently um, is right here under the Eucalyptus cookbooks. Um, and you can go and you can see all of the different vagrant files and stuff uh, that set up our chef server. And it has, you know, basic instructions on how to set it up. Um, here, and I'll show you this. Um, um, but basically, you just install VirtualBox on your laptop, install Vagrant, install Git, um, a couple plugins for Vagrant, and once you've done that, you pull down the, the Eucalyptus, uh, the GitHub repository for the cookbook, and then you just run the Vagrant up, and it runs through the script, and that's what, we're, what I'm running here on my laptop. Um, while this is running, I'd like to show you as the quick start, fast start script. Um, this is a, a new thing that we've launched with our 4.0 4 version of our product, and it's just a one-line script, as I was saying earlier. You run this one script on your machine, and it goes through, and it will provision up a system for you. So let's go ahead and grab that. And 
and then it will take you and guide you through. It'll ask you a couple questions, make sure your BIOS doesn't go to sleep. Um, it will go out, grab the chef's client, and install that. Um, it goes through and installs the chef client, then it's going to come back and it's going to ask us a couple more questions about our environment. for that for a second I'll go ahead and show you the script um, again this is out there on our github environment as well and basically it just shows you how it goes out and talks to your server it has a bunch of questions um, it wants to make sure that you have DHCP turned off you want a static IP on the server um, it will make sure that none of, thing, none of our components are installed or running on that machine as well um, it does a couple um, pre-checks as I said it wants to make sure you're running as root uh, make sure Chef's not installed, um, and then it proceeds to go through the fast start installation. Um, here you go. Now the Chef server is coming up, bringing up questions. Um, it asks you what's your what NIC you want to bridge to, uh, the IP, um, gateway, net mask, um, and then the subnet. Um, then it'll ask you for an IP range. You give it a, a list of ranges. And then it tells you, um, this will take about 15 minutes, go grab a cup of coffee, and it proceeds to go through and running this, the setup for you. It also gives you a log that you can tail that'll show you all the different processes that are running on it. And then this goes, this goes through showing you the different steps that it's running as it's installing the cloud and setting it up. Um, as you can see now, it's installing Eucalyptus Cloud 4.0, which is the backbone of the cloud system. So while this is running, let's go check on our other one. Um, and then it's still trying to set up the Chef server on that side. While we're doing that, we'll wait on, wait on that. Here's the ship script again, and uh, this is uh, another project that we have out there. It's called MicroQA. Um, what this does is it combines both our provisioning system and our um, testing system, which is uTester, um, which is a Python-driven test language or test testing scripts that we have, and it puts a web front end on it, so you can go to this web front end and say. You know, I want to provision a cloud, you send it the credentials, you send it the servers and the IPs, it'll go stand up the cloud, and then you have a different tabs that have different tests, um, and you can go and grab you know, the tests. Once you've got the cloud stood up, you take your creds, you can drop it into this QA tester and say, you know, I'd like you to run a, a suite of um, JavaScript testing against it, and it'll go out and it'll test it, and it'll pr produce the console for, for you. Um, just show you, show you, we also have Ansible playbooks that run against our clouds that help you to set up provision. Um, and we also have Puppet, um, Chef. We have a bunch of these different projects available on our GitHub um, that all work with our system. We have people who are inside of our organization that are writing these scripts, but we also have community members that have been helping us with them as well, um, whether they be clients or just standard community members that are working on those as well. Um, this is the Yuka Dev on my local laptop. Um, you can see once it's got past the, the Chef server, it's now starting to build out the VM. Um, 
and it's starting to do, go through all the services and things that need to be done to install Eucalyptus on my local laptop. Um, back over here, we can take a look. And again, the same thing with the fast start script. It's already started going through installing Eucalyptus. It's bringing the system up and now it's registering things together um, to set up the, the cloud environment on that server that I have access to as well. Um, so in just a few minutes, we should have at least one of these two clouds up and running so we can see the console. Um, I don't know if anybody came and saw the, the cloud backpack as I was wearing it yesterday. Um, that was two Intel Nooks running with a small wireless bridge between the two of them to allow them to talk, one, talk to one another. Um, and it, I had a Kindle Fire that was running the console that you could come up to it and spin up instances, look, check volumes, run um, commands against it, all from the Kindle Fire interface right there to the two little Intel Nooks on my back. still running through the provision scripts, setting up the VM. And you can also just see that, you know, in VirtualBox, there's the two VMs right there running. Um, one thing we've added to our fast start script recently, um, so this, like I said, this was just launched with our 4.0 version of our software. Um, it just came out. Um, the basic install on a minimal six, fix five server gives a couple, only gives a small availability zone to allow to roll up, roll up a couple instances. Um, we added a new script, which is this next script down here, um, which allows you to spin up just the node controller piece of our software. So if you have the fast start and you installed it on a server and you started playing with it and running instances, but you've run out of computing space, um, you run this on a separate um, minimal instance of CentOS, it spins up a new node controller and it gives you the command to attach to the initial fast start cloud that you've set up. Um, so we can run that real quick while the other one's running as well. This does pretty much the same stuff that the original fast start script does, except um, you don't have to worry about adding in um, the IP address range because it pulls that from the initial fast start cloud setup because that works as your cloud controller. Um, and once you've connected the two, it provisions and sends that information over to it say, and says, you know, these are the IPs that we have available to us. This is where you're gonna be accessing the console. This is where your commands are coming from. Again, it's asked for the just the basic setups for the internet. Um, and where the other one said it takes 15 to 20 minutes, this one doesn't give you a time frame because this one I've seen run as fast as two minutes to completely provision out a node controller and give you the command to register it against the, the CLC. Um, so that one's still running. working on setting up the clouds, going through the restart over the control cluster controller now. This is the environment that's installing on my laptop. It's currently trying to run through the installation of the cloud product itself. And this has the same log feature that the other script has as well. 
So if I wanted to see where it was at this point in time, I can do And again, I can see this exactly where it is at any point at, at this point in time as it's running through the logs. And so that one is actually completed. And it took, as you can see there, two minutes and 45 seconds um, to finish setting up a complete node controller on a server, um, where this one is still running, obviously. And that one currently is sitting at the stage where it's installing the node controller on the this, this server itself. So while we wait for that, um, how many people actually use cloud products right now? Okay, how many people use Amazon, OpenStack, uh, Eucalyptus, two and a half? Uh, you run a cluster in-house, what do you use? VMware Fifa. You said virtual machines. Um, the, three that raise their hands, do you use Amazon, I'm going to assume? No? What do you use? OpenStack? OK. Um, as I was mentioning before, the Eucalyptus environment um, works pretty seamlessly with, Am with Amazon. Um, so it is a, as I said, it's a private or a hybrid solution. You can run Eucalyptus servers on your, on your in-house servers provision things, do your development against it, spin up instances, then you can take those instances, pull them down, do a conversion on them, and you can send them straight up to Amazon. Um, so what it helps in is, you know, the development work is not being spun up on Amazon instances. You're not having to, to pay Amazon for development time, whereas, you know, you, depending on how long that takes, you know, you, it could end up getting kind of costly. Um, all right, so. This is now finished. Um, and let's see here. I should now be able to come out here, do this. And now I have a cloud. And this is the server that I was connecting to. So this is not my laptop yet. Um, that one's still running. But as you can see, you have the ability to log into Eucalyptus or log into AWS from our console. Um, as long as you have your credentials for Amazon, you can log into it from here. Um, we'll go ahead and let's see. Here's our new console. Um, as you can see, there's already an instance running. Um, part of the script is that it stands up. Once it stands up the cloud, it launches an instance, so that it has the shows. So you have the ability to see that it's actually running. Um, and it's basically just a little small CROS image. We can come back over here to the cloud and do.
So this is all the services that are started once you've installed the cloud. Um, you've got you know the standard cluster controller, uh, cloud controller, node controllers, um, you know, object storage, all that stuff set up there. Um, Um, and there's the running instance that it starts up. Um, as I said earlier, we spun up the NC. And it gives me a command here that I can take this and add it to my other server. Basically, you just take that control, run that. It says, do you want to connect? It's yes, done. And now I have two node controllers running on this. So I do. Okay. And there I have the two different node controllers. It's initializing the connection to the second one that I just added. And now I'm logged into the instance that's there. And it's just a small little Cirrus test image. Come back over. And from the dashboard here, we can launch instances. We can look at key pairs. We can add volumes. All, this, all the stuff that you need to do with your clouds. This is still going through the stuff on the UK Dev environment. Um, so anyway, while we wait for that to finish, um, is, are there any questions? Yeah, uh, so uh, the question is, what is the definition of a cloud? Um, yeah, so what, what it is, is it's standing up a server. And on that server, you can spin up instances of different types, whether it be Ubuntu, Windows, Cirrus, CentOS. Um, but it's basically giving you the space to spin up these, these instances. And they can be easily spun up or torn down. You can provision them with this scripting, with Puppet, with Ansible, um, all that kind of stuff. And it's the same as, as if you were using Amazon's cloud services. You can spin up an instance in Amazon Cloud Services to do what you need to against, and then you can pull that instance right back down as well. Um, I mean, it, it, the, the Eucalyptus Cloud is, it, it is a, set, essentially set up the same way as those, as the, those cloud services are. Yes. I mean, so the, the cloud services themselves run on the hardware, and then it allows you to spin up essentially VMs um, on those, those servers that allow you to, and then you can connect, you control those with, um, with service groups, with um, policies, and allow people to do specific things on those. So earlier you were saying you could take a instance that spun up on your cloud, say in-house, and migrate it to Amazon? Yes. Can you go through that process? <laughs> uh, I don't have an actual Amazon account right now set up for myself. Um, so I can't actually run through that myself. Um, we do have that in our in our documentation, um, and it, it it's just a process of pulling it pulling down the instance, um, running the Amazon commands to, against it, and pulling that image into it. Um, it's usually not more than 
about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how the size of the image. If it's a larger image, obviously it takes a lot, a lot longer. Um, but just a standard, you know, working image, it can be done pretty quickly. I mean, this is a simple question, but maybe give me a ballpark. Maybe you already said it during the beginning, I missed it, but do you have, like, what kind of system spec should we need for a, a basic cloud besides, like, a, a basic laptop machine to set it up? Like, is there, like, a core server, and it's good to have another? So the Yuka dev environment that, I, that I'm running right here, um, it spins up a VM on my laptop. It spins it up, and it's three cores, uh, 20 gigabytes of space, um, just a simple CentOS baseline Im image. Um, it's a minimal Im install. Um, so it doesn't take up a lot of power, doesn't take a lot of, lot of um, hard drive space, a lot of RAM. Um, excuse me, actually, it's two cores, three gigs of RAM, uh, 20 gigs of space. Um, as far as the server goes, again, the dual core, um, we recommend at least two gigs of RAM, probably four if it's easy, you know, accessible. Um, and again, 20 gigs of space is all you need to spin up a small cloud instance. Were you spinning up like a platform as a service or several instances where everyone can have their own platform? You can spin up several instances where people have their own platform. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so this is still processing through. Again, this one, like I said, this one takes a little bit longer than the the curl code does on the base server. Um, you know, whereas this one took, give or take, 15 to 20 minutes to do everything. Um, on the laptop, it takes between 30 to 45 minutes to spin up the development environment. Um, and as I said, once it's spun up, though, it's it's on your laptop. It's running. You don't have to have connection to the internet to be able to use it. Um, it's running as local host, and it's running through ports and IP tables on the. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, so you can you can come onto the, the console, and and this is the same thing as as I was showing with the cloud backpack yesterday. Um, you can. Install images. Um, we've only got the one image installed in here, obviously. Um, you can give it size, space. Um, this shows the different sizes of uh, instances that can be run in Eucalyptus, given if you have the hardware and the power to support it. Um, but we're just going to spin up a quick M1 instance um, default availability zone, which is what it's set up as. Um, our first key pair, default security group, which has access to port 80, 22, 1. Um, and we're going to launch that instance. And in a matter of a couple seconds, um, that'll come to, to running. Um, and that's just a small instance in this default cloud. Um, we do have. don't have it open. Um, we've been um, using Docker, or not Docker, um, uh, shoot. sorry. Um, Um, Packer, and what that what that has given us the ability to do is we've he's um, Vic has run this new cloud images um, repo on GitHub, and it, what it does is it uses Packer to take down a raw image, put in some information that we want to be spun into the instance or spun into the image for our Eucalyptus use, um, and then prepare it and send it straight into our Eucalyptus system. Um, all in a matter of nine steps there. Um, this is a very simple and easy way to get instances into our clouds, um, and it has been very well received within, internally within the company um, as far as ease of use to try and get newer, instant, newer images in there. Um, we've currently got CentOS 6, CentOS 7, uh, Ubuntu, um, what else does he have in there? 
Debian 7, uh, OpenSUSE 13, um, and Fedora 20. Um, so those are all set up within this pack, this cloud in images uh, setup. And it, what it does is it goes out and it grabs the raw ISO, pulls it down, hits it with a system prep um, file that's in, in these files here. Um, and basically, you know, it says, hey, we want to use the root user. This is the base password. Um, and then it has a post install script that you can add things to. Um, the post install script currently is just a base, just set up for base stuff right now. Um, but you can come into these files and you edit it and you say, hey, I want to spin up an instance this has got, that's got Nginx on it. Um, you put that in here, yum install y Nginx, check config on. Um, and it, when it builds the image, it installs that right away. And then when you spin up the instance, it's already automatically on. And there you have a web server in, in an instance. Um, as soon as the, as soon as it's spun up in your cloud. This is still running, so it'll be just a second there. Um, as I said with our my slide here, we are currently hiring. We've got a couple um, positions in our engineering team, um, sustaining system release. Um, sales if you want to move to San Francisco um, but the uh, other uh, other positions actually are available any part of the country you can be here West Coast East Coast um, as long as you have connection to the internet you can pretty much do the jobs that we have available right, this is running through the last couple of processes of setting up uh, security groups uh, so in a nutshell, um, the eucalyptus will let me experiment with what I want to do with the cloud before moving to Amazon, or will this replace my need to move to Amazon? Both. As so I if said, I want to in-house my servers, if you want I can to have a Amazon type functionality at home. This would be it. Um, we, are, as I said, we are a private and hybrid cloud. Um, the private side of it is you you run up eucalyptus on your in, your metal servers in your data center you have the fully functional cloud right there. And it's, it, it operates just the same as Amazon does, just the same as the other cloud providers do. It's running on your servers, you have total control over it. If you use the hybrid option, so you, you wanna develop on it, and then you can push that to Amazon so that you're not using Amazon instances for development or, or testing and things like that. So it, 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 it works for both ways. Uh, yeah, question here. Um, with this software, would this be considered as a software layer to give you a cloud as compared to others possibly running on bare metal without its own Linux operating system in the middle? So this, is, this doesn't run on bare metal. You have to have an operating system, obviously. Right. Um, uh, repeat part of the question, I'm sorry. So would this be just a software layer for a cloud rather than running on bare metal? Yeah, it's a software layer. So would there be like a performance impact or is there not enough power in s for certain features? Is there, um, the power what you say? Like maybe you wouldn't have access to certain system resources as well as you would if you were running on bare metal or are there any problems or advantages to being in a software layer? You'd have access to, to the entire system. I mean, it, it, once the system spins up, you can pull all the RAM, you can do the configuration and say, you know, you can even actually over commit memory and processing on it as far as that goes. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I kind of, um, I guess, is, is there overhead from allocating resources redundantly? <laughs> Sorry, I can't, didn't just. Do you have a, a sales speed over the cloud? Uh, I don't, but they, we, we did have the sales speed. <laughs> I, I, I mean. How much overhead is there from running just the software layer instead of running on their cloud? Well, it's the choosing setting KVM. Yeah, it's, it's, it's using KVM management. It's not Zen yet. Um, we're using KVM as far as our, our, our hypervisor management. Um, so it's, it's running completely there. All right, so now the UCA dev environment's finally up. Um, and now this is the one that's currently running on my laptop. Um, come back over here and do Vagrant.
and now I'm logged into the cloud instance that's running in the in the VM on my machine. Um, but again, come back over here and do the same thing. Um, and again, it's, it starts up the same way as the, the, the script did on the server. It's already running an instance. Um, you've got your same controls. Security groups already set up there. There's already a key pair. There's already an IAM user. Um, come back over to the server itself. Yeah, you can. You can both, yeah. I mean, there's there's ad definitely admin concepts to it, but the, but as far as the user goes, you can create this volumes, you can create snapshots of those volumes, you can move information back and forth with with relative ease, you can create instance uh, um, ba back storage as well. You can create instances that have volumes already attached to them, um, and be able to do all of that kind of stuff. Um, And then here's, you know, this is the one, the, this cloud that's running on my laptop. I've got the ability to run two smaller instances, um, even to uh, the medium and extra large instances right there on my laptop if the testing instance isn't launched. Um, so this is, you know, the, like I said, this is the ability to do this right there on your laptop. Um, you can give it more power, obviously, if you want to give that VM more access to more of the, the CPU on your machine. You want to give it access to more hard drive on your machine. You want to give it access to more memory on your machine. You can even pump up the volumes that you want to be able to run um, in your laptop itself. Um, but like I said, what the be beauty of this piece right here is I can disconnect it from the internet. I can have my laptop completely disconnected, wireless as well, and I still have access to this environment. There's a cloud running on my laptop at all times. Um, and so that's basically what the UQ Dev environment is. Um, yes, yeah. or an airplane or an airport. We don't have you know Wi-Fi. Um, regardless of what you are, you have the you have ap ap access to a dev development um, environment at any time. All right. Well, that is the the one thing I wanted to show the, as far as the being able to drive the cloud and do it you know, anywhere you wanted to. Um, do I have any more questions? Um, if you have other questions and you want to get a deeper knowledge about it, you know, please see me afterwards. I can at least point you in the right direction to people who can answer the, the deeper and heavier questions that I have not been able to answer fully. Um, and that's it. Customers rely on your website or application. If it's slow or non-responsive, it infuriates your users and costs you money. Keeping your business critical systems humming along requires insight into what they're doing. Your system metrics tell stories, stories that can reveal performance bottlenecks, resource limitations, and other problems. But how do you keep an eye on all of your system's performance metrics in real time and record this data for later analysis? Enter Longview, the new way to see what's really going on under the hood. The Longview dashboard lets you visualize the status of all your systems, providing you with a bird's eye view of your entire fleet. 
You can sort by CPU, memory, swap, processes load, and network usage. Click a specific system to access its individual dashboard, then click and drag to zoom in on choke points and get more detail. Comprehensive network data, including inbound and outbound traffic, is available on the Network tab, and Disk Writes and Free Space on the Disks tab, while the Process Explorer displays usage statistics for individual processes. The System Info tab shows listening services, active connections, and available updates. Adding Longview to a system is easy. Just click the button, copy the one-line installation command, then run the command on your Linux system to complete the process. The agent will begin collecting data and sending it to Longview. Then the graphs start rolling. Use Longview to gain visibility into your servers, so when your website or app heats up, it stays up.